Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome. Hey, everybody. We're hey, here. It's, it's good mushroom growing weather right today here in Pennsylvania. Kind of humid, not maybe not cold enough, right? <laughs> Christopher likes a little cooler weather, not quite so hot. We're in the 80s. <clears throat> no, that's fine. As long as there's rain. I, I noticed I have a few mushrooms growing on my deck. That's probably not a good sign for my deck, but they're orange and kind of cool looking. <laughs> well, at least, if, you know, it's better on your deck than on your desk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they start growing on your desk, then you then you got to start wondering what's going on. Hey, everyone. We have a lot of folks are just joining in right now. We're climbing up there over 150 now, so more coming in. Welcome. Hey, Terry. Terry just said hi in the chat, getting everything started. So yeah, please tell us where you're tuning in from. Say hi. Um, it's so good to see who all is here. Um, my name is Ryan. I'm uh, working with Abby and Karis uh, in the BotanicWise team, working with Christopher here for this webinar and the upcoming program with Christopher Hobbs. All right. Anna, Michelle, Raquel. Nancy, Colleen, what's up, everybody? Isabel from you. Quebec. Yeah. Calgary. Oh, I've been there. All right. Hey, Raj. <laughs> <laughs> Got some friends you. in the group. Yeah. It's nice, nice. to see, see some familiar faces, folks that um, from Allies for Plants and People Symposium, uh, folks we've seen at other, other webinars and events. I'm in Ithaca, New York area. And uh, yeah, all right. We got Queens, New York, Northwoods, Wisconsin. I'll be there in a few weeks. Hello. Ooh, lucky you. I know. All right. So I'm so excited about today's event. Um, and feel free to share in the chat too. Like, you know, something that you're excited about. We're going to be gathering questions throughout this event. In fact, this is going to be a little bit different than previous events. If you've noticed, it's noon. It is 12 o'clock Eastern. So if you're in uh, the West Coast where, where Christopher is, then it's nine o'clock in the morning. So this was uh, Christopher's idea. I said, why don't we switch it up and try something, you know, during the day, it might be a different group of people that can attend. And so yeah, welcome. This might even be your first time coming to a BotanicWise webinar. And so if, if it is your first time, then welcome. You're in for a treat. Uh, we're going to be doing a, a shorter presentation than usual. So about 20 to 30 minutes. We're going to try to keep it in the 20 minute range uh, so that we have room for questions and discussion. We will be ending at uh, after an hour. So we'll be ending at one o'clock. And we will continue the discussion and post the recording in the BotanicWise community. So uh, wave your hand, say hi if you're in the BotanicWise community. If not, uh, then you'll be able to join. It's completely free. It's a private social platform with a news feed and you can have a profile and you can meet people and connect with people there. Um, it's where all the replays for BotanicWise webinars and events. And it's also where BotanicWise courses are. So, if you stick around after we're done with the presentation, you'll hear a little bit about Christopher's program in the BotanicWise community that's coming up in about a week and a half. So, Karis, uh, anything else you want to say for this introduction before we get in? Do you want to introduce? Well, well let me just introduce. Hobbs? Yeah, let me just introduce Christopher. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who have never uh, met him, I always assume that everybody knows who he is because he is very well known. But if you've never heard him speak or really know his credentials, um, Dr. Christopher Hobbs is a fourth generation internationally renowned herbalist and mycology expert. He earned his PhD at University of California, Berkeley, which means he's super smart. And he has research in and publication in evolutionary biology, biogeography, phylogenetics, plant chemistry, and ethnobotany. I'm not even sure what all of those things are, but um, not only is Christopher a science geek, he has a wealth of clinical experience, both as a licensed um, acupuncturist and an herbalist. 
And he, he literally is a walking sort fount of information. If you just hang with him, he will teach you something within the next five minutes of just hanging out in your backyard with him, if you're lucky enough to do that. But I just wanna add what I like most about Christopher who is, has become a dear friend of mine is the, uh, the gentle way he, and mindfulness, the mindfulness with which he approaches his work and his day-to-day -day life. And he has an, a, a passionate desire both to keep learning himself, but also to uh, help do his part to make the, the planet a gentler place to live. So without that, without further ado, Christopher, you want to begin? Unless Ryan has something he wants to say before that. Oh, I wanted to mention too, oh, oh, his new book, which we'll talk about a little bit, um, Medicinal Mushrooms, The Essential Guide, is the companion guide to his upcoming six-week program that's hosted by BotanicWise. So it's a beautiful, beautiful book. If you haven't got a copy of it yet, you're going to want it by the end of it. Mickey says she he just got the copy. So cool. Let's get started. So um, Christopher, uh, when we planned this webinar, we talked about, uh, we had a, a bunch of conversations about what people needed to really understand. And one of the things that you've talked about is um, how some of the prominent products that are available, the commercial products for mushrooms are actually contain a lot of starch and there's a way to find out if they're quality or not. And, you know, I'd love to speak a little bit about that um, just so that people can be a little bit savvy about choosing products and understanding how to navigate this world of medicinal mushrooms. But I'd like to start by asking you to tell us, and for those of us who are newer to medicinal mushrooms or just want to go a little bit deeper, why is this topic so exciting to you and why do you think people should study it? Well, first of all, I want to thank all the Botanic Wise um, crew and uh, everyone who's worked on this, uh, on this webinar. And uh, thank you for coming today and, and joining us. I feel very honored and, and uh, excited to see you all and be with you and talk about mushrooms, which I'm so passionate about and uh, have been for really decades. Mushrooms are really uh, transformative in many ways. And uh, sometimes we think of mushrooms as molds maybe, or uh, <clears throat> something that we don't want to be growing around, around our, our house. But, but mushrooms are uh, just an, a huge, huge group of organisms that grow all over the world that can produce fruiting bodies and sometimes beautiful fruiting bodies like this black rishi here. Uh, so uh, mushrooms can be quite dramatically looking <clears throat> gorgeous and just fascinating. And when we get out in the woods and start seeing mushrooms sprouting up, I think we can't help but be interested and excited about, I wanna know more. I wanna to get to know these mushrooms better. And certainly some of them are incredibly tasty and delicious like porcini, of course, or chanterelles are just so delicious and wonderful to find. They're so exciting. I think we really do have an, an innate sense that uh, of getting out and and harvesting some food for ourselves or maybe growing it and we can cultivate mushrooms too. So um, inviting mushrooms into our life is has so many different benefits. One is the nutrition and, and the traditional use as a, as a food, as a very low profile food, as far as um, the and carbon and the environment go, it's very efficient to grow them. And they have a lot of protein and fiber and, and vitamins and minerals. And then we get down to the medicinal qualities, which are uh, the most important are that they're immunomodulating. And so many things can weaken our immune response in this life. If we're under stress, if our nutrition isn't optimal, if we have uh, you know, there's pressure on us and so forth, then our immune system, or we have an, a chronic infection, perhaps a viral infection. Many viruses are kind of, we don't know, even though we have them, there are a lot of viruses that reside in our body so it can weaken our immune response. So mushrooms are, 
uh, primarily studied and known for their ability to increase the, the power of our immune system to respond to viruses and bacteria, bacterial infections, yeast infections, and, and not only that, but just help us uh, be, feel stronger and have more energy during the day. So that's, I think, why the, the idea of, of using mushrooms for medicine is just spreading all over the world, really. I can't pick up a, a news media article or a paper or online without seeing an article about the health benefits of mushrooms. So it's, they're being discovered all over the world. However, uh, for the last two, 2,000 years, they've been uh, incorporated into a number of people's cuisine and daily lives in Asia and Eastern Europe and so forth. Chaga, for instance, you might have heard of. Chaga has lately been getting a, a lot of interest. Uh, it's a very interesting looking, um, kind of looks like coal growing on a birch tree. Uh, but lately, Chaga has been known for uh, many, many of its health benefits. In the Western world now, we're starting to turn on to it, but it has been revered and used, utilized in, in Russia and Eastern Europe for centuries and centuries for uh, protecting the immune system, for re reducing the risk of cancer, for protecting the, the gut and the stomach and so forth. So mushrooms have a tremendous range of medicinal uses and benefits like reishi and shiitake and turkey tail. Uh, and, and certainly reishi is one of the most beautiful mushrooms of all. This is a, a small one, but this is the ancient reishi, Ganoderma lingzhur, that was used. So just getting an idea of how to use them and how to brew them, how to cook with them. Uh, one of the main principles is eat the whole thing. Don't throw any of it away because inside the fiber, inside the cell wall of mushrooms are all these fibers like beta-glucans, which are the main immunomodulating compounds. And so when we make a tea and throw the residue away, we're actually missing about 60, 70% of the medicine. So what I'm going to talk about in this course and what I'm really going to show you step by step, and it's also in my book, is how to make mushroom extracts powders that you can have a powder. I've got a big bag of powder here that I made uh, on my dryer. And I use, I use this powder daily. This is a reishi powder. I use that powder daily in smoothies and I can make an instant tea and so forth. So I can incorporate it into my daily regime and life very easily. And of course, there are a lot of powders out there for sale on the marketplace. And so what Ryan was talking about is that a lot of those powders, unfortunately, and, and capsules that have medicinal mushrooms are really full of starch. And this is unfortunate, but what happens is, is that if you're using a fruiting body, you're not going to get any starch in your product because mushrooms do not produce starch. They only produce uh, immunoactive compounds, vitamins and minerals and fiber and so forth. They don't contain starch. However, most uh, cultivators, most growers, in, especially in the US, grow mushrooms on cooked brown rice and other grains. Why? Because it's so easy, it's so efficient to grow mushroom mycelium. The mycelium really are the white threads that go out into the environment and digest uh, fiber and food and leaf matter and, and tree limbs that are down and so forth and transform it into protein, medicine, and nutrition. So uh, unfortunately though, when you're growing mycelium on cooked brown rice in poly bags, which is most of the products on the market we have here in the US, then uh, oftentimes the mycelium does not completely digest all of the starch. In fact, it only maybe digests about a third of it or a quarter of it even. And some research shows that US products on the shelf could have up to 80% starch from the brown rice. There's nothing wrong with the brown rice starch, but if you wanna spend $30 for a bottle of capsules, you might as well get everything you're paying for. And that's what we're really going to go into in this course is how to get, find the best products, how to, how to recognize and even test them at home. I'm gonna show you right now how to test for uh, starch in your products. Yeah. So the first thing you wanna do, if you buy a, a product and, and you're getting a capsules uh, of, of a product, 
So the first thing you want to do is take one of those capsules out of the bo out of your bottle uh, and, and open it up. I, right here, I've got a piece of white paper that's folded over on a piece of tin foil. You could use a plastic bag just so the iodine doesn't leak down. And what you want to do is open up the capsule. Uh, I wish I had a little stand here. I'm going to open the capsule here and I'm going to just roll the powder out uh, onto the sheet. And then I'm going to roll the other side here, get all the powder. So I've, right now I've got the powder on my piece of paper here and I'm going to spread it out a little bit so that it forms a kind of a, this camera's opposite. Then I'm going to take my bottle of iodine solution and you can get iodine on Amazon or wherever. They're, they're, it's so easy to get just a small bottle of iodine and it doesn't cost much either. So naturally iodine is kind of an amber color. You can see right here, this amber color. And, and then you see that the, uh, the powder is just a beige color. And I'm going to drop it, if I can get it in front of my camera here, this is the exact opposite. I'm going to drop the, a few of the drops onto the powder here. And what you're gonna see is that the powder turns bright blue. Can you see it there? I'm gonna pull that down so you can see it. So it, it actually ran off the, let me put a little more here and mix it with the powder. You can see how, how really how dark blue this, this, this uh, color turned here. Now, when you get a, a really bright and dark blue color like that on the powder, it's, that means it's full of starch. It's probably 80% starch. Uh, I mean, it turned dramatically and bright, really bright blue. That means that there is a lot of starch in that product. Uh, if, and so if it doesn't turn, so you put the, the iodine on there and it just stays a beige color, then you know you're okay. But when you see this bright blue immediately pop up and it turns the powder bright blue, you know that there is a significant amount of starch. What happens is starch is a polymer, a large molecule that has glucose sugars in, in chains in such a way that we can digest it. So we can, we can break the glucose down and we can get the glucose out of there and use it for energy. Uh, however, uh, in between these molecules, there are bonds. And so when we put iodine on it, the iodine molecule fits in there between the, the, um, the glucose molecules. And because of the resonance it creates, it's gonna turn bright blue if there's a significant amount of starch there. This is a very old and well-known test for starch. So this is a way that we can be citizen scientists. Uh, you know, you can call the manufacturer and say, how do you uh, grow your mushrooms? Where do they come from? And so forth. But the proof is in the pudding. Just take a capsule or a bit, a little bit of powder and test it with iodine. And you immediately know if you're buying starch or you're buying mycelium biomass that is full of protein, vitamins, minerals, and immunostimulating uh, compounds. So, so that's very important <clears throat> just to, don't take a manufacturer's word for it. I've been in the industry for a very long time, the natural products industry. And though uh, we have a saying, trust in Allah, but tie your camel. So I, I'm a very trusting person. I believe companies when they tell me they have no starch in their product, but just in case, I'm going to get a bottle of iodine and I'm going to test it. And uh, sometimes uh, the manufacturer is misinformed because they might buy the, the mushroom powder from some place, from some other company overseas, and they get a certificate that says that it's free of starch, that it's all mushroom biomass, but really they don't know, they don't test. So sometimes it's not really a lie. They just don't know what they have. So Christopher, one of the um, one of the big questions that's out there about medicinal mushrooms is that fruiting bodies versus mycelium. So 
when you're talking about identifying the starch, are you saying that fruiting body is the, the best kind of medicinal mushrooms to use? Well, that's a great question, Ryan, definitely. Uh, so in looking, looking at a fruiting body here, uh, this has no starch in it, zero starch. So does that mean that never get mycelium, never use mycelium? No, there are many advantages to mycelium. Number one, fruiting bodies are very expensive to produce in this country because labor costs are high. In China, you can produce fruiting bodies and you can have the fruiting bodies shipped over to the US. You can have them cooked and because mushrooms always have to be steamed at a high temperature or cooked to break down the bonds, the chitin bonds, which is a very tough polymer so that we can gain access to the, the, all of the goodies and the nutrition and the immunostimulating compounds. So it has to be heated and broken down. So, so you can have the mushrooms, the fruiting body shipped over, but then you have to ship it all away from China. You cannot really have full, um, you know, I mean, there are companies that do sell fruiting bodies from China and which sell organically and they're likely pretty good quality. They're, they're, they may be high quality. Uh, it's just harder to determine and, and monitor the growing conditions when it's in China. Also, what about the shipping costs all the way over to the US and then the organic program, how solid and steady is the organic program over there in China? So for a number of reasons, I really like getting domestically grown uh, mushroom products. And there are a number of companies that grow organic that do guarantee amount, the amount of beta-glucan that you get in your product. And they also, uh, I've tested many, I have a lab here and I do test a lot of mushrooms products. And there are some companies out there that are domestic that grow them organically in pristine places that are pretty much free of starch and do have a significant amount of the beta-glucans that you really want in your product that right. activates your immune response to fight viruses and, and other types of infections, mm -hmm. among what? other things. So the what? mycelium is not any worse than, I mean, it has the same active compounds that the, that the fruiting body does. It's just that you want all mycelium or the most amount of mycelium that you can get in your product you don't want a lot of starch and brown rice. Oh, okay, so it sounds like the the, the downside of a mycelium-based product is just that you, you're not as sure how much medicinal value there is to it. Is that what you're saying? Like, it could be a little bit more. It could be some starch in it. It depends on how it's grown and how long the mycelium is, is left to grow mm -hmm. and, and completely consume yeah. all of the rice, which might take months it might take three months and many manufacturers don't want to wait three months. They want to harvest it after <laughs> a, a month or maybe even three weeks. And by yeah. then it has, the, the mycelium has not eaten up all of the rice at that mm -hmm. point. Yeah, okay, thank you. So, so quality is a very big concern. We can make our own. You can get buy fruiting bodies organically grown and make your own. And that's what we're going to go into in this class, I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to, and where to get organic mushrooms uh, for the best price, high quality organic mushrooms, and then you can make your own medicine. And it's not hard. It's really not hard at all. All you need is a blender, uh, a pot to cook them in, or a pressure cooker is preferred if you have it. And I'm gonna show you how to do that so that you can make your own powders and then you can make a big batch of powder and, and save so much money. And then yeah. you know what you're getting. You know exactly what you're getting. So that that's is what, an advantage. That's what seems so exciting, I, I think, about medicinal mushrooms is how accessible and abundant it is as a form of medicine. And you mentioned uh, in numerous occasions um, immunity and the way that medicinal mushrooms can support our immune systems. Can you speak a little bit more to like why it's unique for that versus you know other medicines or uh, or or what might be missing if we're use like looking to improve our health through other forms of medicine but not engaging with medicinal mushrooms? What's unique about them in that regard? Well, mushrooms, all mushrooms, and that includes yeast. You may not know, 
but yeast like um, uh, Saccharomyces, which is what we use to ferment bread, grains and make beer and so forth, Saccharomyces is a yeast. Yeasts are simply one-celled fungi. So uh, mm -hmm. all fungi, including yeast, contain compounds in their cell wall called beta-glucans. And beta-glucans that in, are in fungi are very unique to fungi. Mm -hmm. And the, the unique thing about it is there are long chains of glucose like starches, but they're connected in a way that we cannot, in a reverse way, that we cannot digest them and break them down. And they're also highly branched. So you get all these branches and, and that adds flexibility and strength to the cell wall of the mushroom. So when we grind up a mushroom and cook it, then we're exposing all of those beta, fungal beta-glucans that are highly branched, large molecular weight compounds. And when, our, when we swallow them, one interesting thing is that 60% of our immune tissue is in our gut, a full 60% is in our gut. So when we swallow something like a mushroom product or even a delectable chanterelle, all of these beta-glucans are interacting with our immune system. There are very ancient receptor sites for these beta-glucans and it sets up a whole complex um, mechanism and, and response in our immune system that can really enhance T cell production, uh, even memory T cell production, which is very important for remembering viruses like COVID, for instance, a lot of research on that now. Also, it, it enhances B cell production, which produce antibodies and antibodies are specifically designed to destroy different types of viruses and bacteria and pathogens and cancer cells too. And uh, so, and also our, what, what you would call our innate immune response, which is all these cells uh, like macrophages and monocytes that go out and actually directly attack cancer cells and uh, directly attack uh, our cells that are infected by viruses and so forth. <coughs> Excuse me. So <coughs> there is a complex immune response that happens once, once our body recognizes these mushroom products and especially mm -hmm. the beta-glucans. So, another thing that you've spoken about is uh, the importance of mushrooms in our diet. And you, talk, and you just mentioned that too, just how you know, the way that we in ingest them. And I know that you, know, you talk about gut health and you talk about immunity and you talk about focus and, and mental health and how a lot of that is all, all connected through our digestive system. And the way that, you know, when we look at medicine as just, you know, a capsule or something that we take, but what if it becomes more part of our diet, our regular day-to-day -day experience that those habits, that's where we get those real long-term benefits because then it's a really big part of our life. Um, well, <clears throat> can you speak to that a little bit? Yes, yeah, so, well, you can use mushrooms on an acute basis. Say you've got a, a cold coming on or you feel a scratchy throat or you feel like you're getting, you're getting a fever. I immediately go to the reishi and start using a, a, like a half teaspoon or a teaspoon of reishi and mix it in a little warm water and drink it down. And I might add other herbs in there like licorice or something else to flavor it, but I'm getting all that reishi, um, the, the cell walls, the beta-glucans, all of the nutrition too. And that really is going to spike up a very immediate immune response to fight the virus. I've never found anything more effective than reishi for fighting colds and flu and viral infections. It, and it's ancient, it's been used for a couple, probably a thousand years. Uh, people have revered it because um, it turns out reishi is the highest mushroom that we know of in the in these immunomodulating beta glucans. So it's a very powerful mushroom. So yes, I use it for acute. Uh, use, I have it on hand, but during the winter I take it daily. I take it every single day, and I mix it in with a with a with some rubos or some other tea, and then I drink it down in the morning. And I find that I'm pretty much virus free all winter. Uh, I've been doing that for the last three or four winters and knock on wood, it's been pretty, pretty amazing how cold and flu free I've been. How I, you know, my son can get sick, my son lives with me, but 
my son has brought colds and flus home and it's pretty remarkable how cold and flu free I have been the last number of years using Rishi all during the winter. So it could be used for acute conditions to ward them off and stop them in their tracks, or it could be used chronically as a daily supplement to keep my immune system vigilant and strong. And you've also, like also, um, incorporating mushrooms in, into food regularly, like lion's mane um, and shiitakes and, th and things like that. Well, that's, that's another way that mushrooms are, have always been used. Uh, and, and I love this concept, which we all know about, <clears throat> but I think mo that it needs to be more widely circulated and talked about is that food and medicine really is not separate. When you think about what is the best medicine in my life? Is it, is it these pills that we, that we take, you know, or go to the doctor and get a bottle of pills? Is that really what medicine is all about? Or is it the, the diet that we eat every day? We're taking in so much biomass, so much food. We know that this is having an, a major impact on our health. For one thing, 60% of our immune tissue is in our gut. And number two, 80% of the serotonin in our body that is produced is produced in our gut. And this regulates mood. It regulates our, <clears throat> our sleep cycle. It regulates how calm we are. Uh, so it's just amazing how impactful our diet is on our mood, on our immune response, and how we're feeling day to day, and our energy. So we want to maintain a good, uh, a good gut, of course, but, but uh, <clears throat> my point being is that incorporating mushrooms into our cuisine, into our cooking, is a way to really increase the medicinal quality of our daily food. And this is, this is so important because we're eating food every day. So why not incorporate reishi, uh, not reishi as much, but you can make a turkey tail powder and sprinkle that in your food or put it in a soup and it has a nice mushroomy flavor and a, a huge immune boost. But you know, if we're eating shiitake and lion's mane and, uh, and wood ear, for instance, which I like a lot, uh, or, or maitake, any of these wonderful edible, even the button mushroom and, and portobello, any of these mushrooms have beta-glucans in them and have aminoceuticals, you might say, in them. So that's a way, and then fiber. Mushrooms are the highest fiber food and, and we need more fiber in our diet to prevent cancer, to keep our bowels regular and so forth. So, and, our, and literally, if you're getting a good strong amount of fiber daily, you're going to uh, cut your risk of cancer, diabetes, and heart disease by, by up to 50% over the years. Yeah. So we want a lot more fiber in our diet. <clears throat> Most people in this country only get about 15 grams and the government recommends 25, but people that have a traditional diet get around 40 or 50 grams of fiber per day. Mushrooms are one of the highest, if not the highest fiber food out there. So by adding shiitake, maitake, lion's mane, and they're so delicious too. So just by growing them, having them on hand, getting grow kits, going to the local store and getting maitake and so forth. Uh, and by the way, uh, maitake, shiitake do hold, hang out in the refrigerator very well for up to a week or even two weeks. I keep shiitake in my refrigerator, make sure not to put them in a plastic bag and keep, keep the air tight because they'll sweat and they'll, they'll let off moisture. And uh, when that happens, then they're gonna start fermenting. So just keep it in a loose, uh, uh, for instance, really good way to store them is in a wax paper bag that's just kind of closed in the, but not completely closed and keep it in your refrigerator for up to two weeks. So you don't have to worry about just going to the store and buying them all the time. They do store very well in the refrigerator. So incorporate them in your daily diet, and this is going to increase the medicinal value of your diet tremendously. I was excited after you know we first talked about this when we were working on putting together the, the program uh, that you have coming up. And I was at the farmer's market and I found a, a, a business that was selling lion's mane uh, that they're growing here locally. So I, you got me into this and then I, I got my first 
batch of lion's mane and cooked it. And I really enjoyed it. So I wanted to just tell you that and thank you for getting me turned on to, um, you know, eating lion's mane just in my day-to-day -day life. So my pleasure. We need to um, shift into some qu some more questions. I've, I've brought a few questions in from the chat in this conversation already, but uh, we have some fantastic questions. Are, um, are you ready to, to do that, Christopher? Yeah. Let's awesome. Go. So, um, and just real quick announcement before we- I never heard a question I didn't like. <laughs> That's awesome. So yeah, quick announcement before we jump in, just so everybody knows, um, we're going to- mention this more at the end of the webinar, but we do have uh, in the Botanic Wise community, a six week online program with Christopher Hobbs, Medicinal Mushrooms, The Essential Guide. And it's a six week program that is going through, um, you know, all of the kind of stuff that you'd want to learn about medicinal mushrooms. So, you know, diving- And deep. Rishi is so important as a medicinal <laughs> lion's mane but reishi has a broad range of things that you can do with it. It's so mm -hmm. such an important one. It has a long history. So we really want to go in depth in reishi. It's going to be the most versatile mushroom out there. And there's so much to know about reishi. <clears throat> lion's yeah. mane is another. We're going to have lion's mane as a topic because lion's mane is so amazing because it is really the mushroom that... Uh, that, that has clinical studies that show that it can improve our mood. Mm -hmm. And so for depression, anxiety, uh, lion's mane has, and it's fantastically popular in Asia, fantastically popular. And people take it all over, all over Asia uh, almost daily to, to help um, strengthen and mm -hmm. protect their stomach and their gut. Uh, and also for its immunomodulating properties, but also for their mood stabilizing effects. And lastly, for lion's mane, a lot of people are getting excited about it because it can actually increase um, the regeneration of nerves in your body. Mm -hmm. So it has a neuropromotive effect so that, so that for uh, nerve repair. So there's a lot of excitement about lion's mane these days. Awesome. Uh, and chaga is another one that we'll talk about that's just an, a fantastic mushroom. Uh, we're also going to talk about psilocybin, uh, and, and uh, so I, in my book, uh, I have, oh, and then here's week four, we're going to talk about making medicine at home, which is a really fantastic way to uh, save a lot of money, make sure that you're getting the highest quality products, because you're making them yourself. So I'm going to demonstrate step by step how to make mushroom products at home <clears throat> in my kitchen. So you can see how easy it is and how cost effective it is. Uh, so, and then going on to week five, uh, we're going to talk about psilocybin. There's a tremendous worldwide interest now in hallucinogens like LSD and psilocybin and many clinical trials. And I do, I do talk about it. I do review all the clinical trials in my book that, um, that have been performed so far on psilocybin therapy. And so we're going to go into depth uh, in one of our classes on how the studies show that it can reduce symptoms of depression, anxiety, uh, early childhood trauma can be worked with successfully, and PTSD, uh, also addictions. It's just uh, really quite astounding and amazing how many <clears throat> um, clinicians and even MDs and psychiatrists are becoming interested in psilocybin therapy. And then we're going to talk about cooking with medicinal mushrooms, recipes, how to, how to, um, how to you know, slice them up and, and what kind of dishes they, they go well in, how to really bring out the tastiness of mushrooms, which ones are the best, uh, and how to also look in uh, uh, forage for, for wild mushrooms in the woods. I'm going to talk about that and, <clears throat> and what to look out for as far as toxic mushrooms and how to choose uh, the really the best ones that are out there and how to, how to trim them and store them and, and where to look and so forth. So that's going to be an exciting class and um, I'm looking forward to that. Thanks, Christopher, for giving us kind of a, a walkthrough. I know like 
it's exciting to me that you're going so deep into some specific varieties, especially the ones that are so accessible as well. So not just, you know, not it's not just like a program where you're going to give us like 50 different mushrooms to learn. We're really going to go deep into the ones that we can start using with so many benefits. Um, so I'm going to jump into one of the questions that came up a lot, which was when talking about um, immunity and mushrooms that support the immune system, what considerations do we need to uh, think about when um, dealing with autoimmune disease or potentially medications that are suppressing immune response? Yes, <clears throat> and that's a question that you know almost always comes up, which I'm, I'm fascinated with. However, uh, there, there are some really well done research papers that show that mushrooms more than just being a, a pure stimulant, they're more uh, modulators. So they upregulate some immune processes and they downregulate other processes. And there are quite a few studies that show that mush mushrooms can really benefit people with autoimmune conditions like arthritis or Crohn's uh, and, and, ar and arthritis and so forth. There are studies that show that mushrooms can downregulate the inflammation while upregulating repair um, parts of our immune system that can repair and can and relieve and, and remove diseased tissue or, or inflamed tissue and so forth. And so I'm, and after, I have to say that I've been using mushrooms in my clinical practice and personally for so many years. And in my clinical practice, I rarely saw people with autoimmune conditions have any problems at all with using mushrooms regularly. Of course, um, it is possible that you could have an allergic reaction to a mushroom. So that's why it's always good to start out a little bit slowly. Just take some and try it and see how you're doing with it. Um, the common ones like agarics, many people eat agaric mushrooms, the button mushroom, portobello uh, and criminy mushrooms. If, if you can eat those without any problems, then it's very doubtful that you're going to have an allergic reaction to any mushroom. I would, I mean, there are some that are well known like honey mushroom. I go over that in my book. So there are a few species that, that are more commonly known to produce an allergic reaction in some people if you're sensitive, but many don't. I would say the, the vast majority of people do not experience allergic reactions. Mushrooms have a very, very good safety, safety profile. That's why they're so fantastic. They're mm -hmm. food, they're yeah. literally medicinal foods. And so they're not drugs even though they have profound effects in the body, they are not drugs. They're natural, th natural foods that we, our body is used to over evolutionary time. Mm -hmm. So, so I, don't, I don't think it's a major problem based on my long experience and the research that's going on. However, of course, if you have an autoimmune condition and you're starting with reishi or you're starting with turkey tail, it's best to just ease into it to begin with and see how you're doing. One of the things that, that has come up um, in a couple of questions as well was just feeling, you know, nervous about, about trying medicinal mushrooms or just their kind of mysterious feeling. And you mentioned before how they can, you know, mushrooms in general, just in kind of mainstream culture are still seen as kind of like, you know, mold or decay or, or just mysterious. And they run the whole range from, you know, life supporting to dangerous and toxic. And then we also have the whole range of um, with psilocybin and the psychedelic effects. And even though those things are becoming more accepted or, or talked about, um, you were telling me yesterday, it's still very niche. So what's, what's in the way? And do you feel like, like some of us are still internalizing some of the, the fear? You've talked a little bit about fungiphobia. Can you speak to that? Well, some cultures are very uh, fun, fungophilic, you might say. They love mushrooms. And I would say vast portions of the Earth's population love mushrooms. For instance, Siberia, they incorporate mushrooms in their diet daily. They love going out in the forest with their families and harvesting mushrooms. Throughout Asia, Southeast Asia, they grow mushrooms. Of course, it's wet and warm, and it's so easy to cultivate mushrooms. Uh, they cultivate a wide variety of mushrooms and eat it in their da daily diet. 
in, in China when I was studying Chinese medicine in Hangzhou, after I got my acupuncture license, I went to Hangzhou and I, I studied and worked in a traditional Chinese medical hospital. And there was a, a, um, a restaurant right around the corner from the hospital and I'd go down every day for lunch. And I just loved the mushrooms that they put in their dishes, including wood ear. I don't know if you've ever seen wood ear. It looks just like a, an ear, but it's very, very uh, interesting texture and good flavor. I just love wood ear. And so uh, I, I tried to learn how to say, could you put more mushrooms and more wood ear in my dish? But, it, but I never did get the tones right. So I had my teacher write out, please add more wood ear in Chinese. And I just would hold it up to the waitress or the waiter and they'd go, okay. And then they'd load all this wood ear into the dish. So, so, uh, so many cultures in the world love mushrooms. They're just crazy about mushrooms. We're kind of the exception in, in England. In England, it's known that there are a lot of fungophobes there, there but it's just changing so, so rapidly. The newer generation, the younger generation of people, millennials and, and younger are really embracing mushrooms uh, tremendously. I mean, my son is 19. I hear that his, his uh, friends are, are loving mushrooms. They, they know about mushrooms and they're using them and putting them in powders and smoothies and so forth, making even taking shots or whatever. So this is changing dramatically, but I think there's still a large portion of the US population and, and people in other maybe Western um, European countries who have a, a somewhat of a suspicion of mushrooms, but <clears throat> molds are quite different than, than fruiting bodies that, and higher mushrooms that produce fruiting bodies like all the ones that we're talking about. Those have been used for food for 2000 years or probably a lot longer. And, and uh, I think that a lot of people are quickly getting over that, that hesitation to, to try mushrooms and to start adding them. The one thing about mushrooms, more than I wanna add, is that mushrooms kind of taste a little bit meaty. That's why people will, will make a portobello burger or something with a portobello because it has these Una, unani flavors. It has these kind of rich flavors in the mushroom once it's stir fried that come out. And also the, the texture can be a little bit more like meat. And so, and it, ha, it has high protein. So really mushrooms are like a great transition food away from eating so much meat in our diet, uh, which is healthy. Plant-based diet is the healthiest diet out there to, for longevity and to prevent serious chronic disease. So it's a way, mushrooms are a way to kind of transition off of so much meat and using mushrooms in the diet daily is just such a good way to do that. So, so we have a couple of questions about like, you know, cooking versus raw. So um, I'd love to know like, you know, it, do you get the benefits from eating a raw mushroom like at a salad bar yeah. and and then also when it comes to powders, are the powders cooked or when you get a mushroom powder, is that raw? Most mushroom powders out there should be cooked. Uh, make sure that if you get a powder out there that it has been steam cooked or cooked in some way. <clears throat> you do not want to use mushrooms raw. First of all, except, yeah, I mean, a few sliced button mushrooms on the salad, that's fine. Those are pretty tender. Those are pretty digestible. However, for the most part, you'd always wanna cook the mushrooms. And number one, because <clears throat> they have so much fiber in there that is indigestible, that needs to be broken down to access the protein, the vitamins and minerals and the immuno uh, activating compounds. So you wanna break it down uh, and gain all the nutrition and all the goodies out of there. You're gonna get a lot more out of a cooked button mushroom than you are out of a raw uh, button mushroom. And number two, uh, if eating a lot of mushrooms raw can lead to digestive upset more likely because of these fibers that are somewhat indigestible, very un indigestible unless they're well cooked. So mm -hmm. typically mushrooms should be cooked. About how long should you cook them for medicine? Or <clears throat> is there, well, is for there, cuisine. Is there a range, yeah. 
like shiitake, if you put a little of olive oil in your pan and slice up the shiitake, put a little olive oil and a little water in there and maybe some seasoning and then turn the heat on, put the cover on, literally five minutes they're cooked. Hmm. So they're very easy to cook. Oyster mushrooms are very tender and very easy to cook. Uh, very quickly, they cook within minutes, literally, is all you need. Mm. The, pow the heavy powders, <clears throat> the, the more woody mushrooms like reishi, they need to be cooked longer. Right. They need to be cooked up, to, uh, boiled up to an hour or put them in a pressure cooker is even better and break them down. And then you can, then you can um, let them cool and grind them up and use them in food, use them as medicine, mm -hmm. make your powders and so forth. Yeah, we actually have a question about that too. Um, uh, the question says, in making a double mushroom extract, I've always tinctured an alcohol first, then decocted. Um, in your new book, you decoct first, then tincture. So what is the, you know, what's the thinking behind this order? I, in my book, I discuss how to make all these mushroom products and show pictures step by step. But a double extraction is, is good when you want to capture both all of the water soluble compounds in mushrooms plus the alcohol soluble compounds. Mm. <clears throat> so the, the large molecular weight compounds, once they're cooked, they, they can be extracted from the mushroom like the beta glucans and the proteins and any, any of those types of fibers can be extracted with, boil, with hot water. So you do that, you make a tea first and then you press out all the liquid uh, from, from, the, uh, from, the cook, from the spent um, mushrooms. And then you go ahead and, and simmer that down until it's pretty concentrated, um, reduced by about one to 10. And then you go ahead and you take the fruiting bodies that you took out of the, out of the boiling part of it and you tincture those with, with strong alcohol. Then, so the first process, the cooking, you're gonna extract all the beta glucans or many of them and the proteins and other immunological active compounds. And then with the tincturing process, you're gonna get out all the phenolic compounds, which have antioxidant properties, all the terpenes, which have a lot of different benefits on the nervous system and so forth and respiratory tract system. And, and then you're going to, uh, and also terpenes and phenolics, those are small molecular weight compounds that are alcohol soluble. Then after about a week or so shaking it, and so forth, where well, you're gonna grind those up and then you're going to filter them both and add them together and you have a double extraction that has the best of, best of both worlds, you might say. Awesome. So another question and then, and then we're gonna um, share something really special at the end, but uh, another question and oh, and, and if your question didn't get answered, um, I did my best to, to choose and combine some things, but Christopher, um, is actually in the BotanicWise community and we're gonna be putting the, the replay there. So we'll be able to um, you know, get into a few other questions there. You can actually jump in to the replay post and say hi right in there, you know, chat with all of us in the community. Um, so you'll get that via email uh, when we're done today. Uh, but one question uh, to wrap up the Q&A is, what about switching varieties? You know, if you've been taking a variety for a while uh, should you switch, you know, how long to take a, you know, specific variety as medicine? Yes. <laughs> um, first of all, let me, uh, let me answer Corrine's uh, question. I saw a question pop up that has to do a double extraction. Always do the water based extraction first, then the tincture afterwards, mm -hmm. because if you do the tincture first, the, the, um, that could damage or harm some of the beta-glucans. And plus the beta-glucans are not soluble in water. You wanna break it everything down with the hot water process. Then you press it out the liquid, simmer it down, concentrate it, and then do the tincture words afterwards. Everything's broken down and then it's much easier to extract all those terpenes and phenolic compounds and then add them together. And so then your question was, uh, again, Ryan, was, uh, what was it? It was about okay. switching varieties. Oh, right. But don't say varieties because it's really species. Oh. Uh, th there is a distinction between varieties and species. Thank you, yeah. So, so reishi is a completely different genus. So mm. phylogenetically in the family tree, reishi and shiitake, turkey tail, they're all quite different in, in nature. 
in the fungal kingdom. So those are different genera and they're also different species. So just say, what, you know, can, what about switching species? Which one's better? We're gonna discuss all that in my seminar, but if, but if you start with, with reishi or turkey tail uh, for really a strong immune boost, those are the two best ones to start for a strong immune boost, reishi, turkey tail. And those are the most proven. So you're using those, but if you're using turkey tail after maybe a few months, then switch over to reishi and your body might um, become used to the, the immuno activating compounds in reishi or turkey tail. So you switch over to the other one and then you could switch back and forth every three or four months. If you're taking them long-term for keeping your immune system strong, say it's an adjuvant to a cancer program, a prevention or treatment program, which there are lots of research on that I'm going to discuss in the course, then you, you want to switch them around a little bit. But what about taking a blend that has seven or 14 different mushrooms? You can take a blend. That's a good general health, health and immune tonic. You can take a blend that has all these different ones. Your body can't really adjust to and get used to all these different types of molecules. So that's kind of a good way to just get a general health supplement is to get a supplement that has maybe five or, or seven or 14 different. I don't, I don't think 14 is necessary, but certainly five or seven or so is, is kind of a good general health supplement. Great. Thank you, Christopher. So it is 12.58, we're right on time. And um, I think, you know, Karis and, and Abby and I can, uh, can hang out a little bit after one o'clock. Abby just dropped a link in the chat. Um, Christopher and Karis, what are you, like, what are you most excited about with the course that is coming up? And there's a lot of folks are saying thank you in the chat too, it's, this is really sweet. Um, and before anybody leaves, and before you answer, Christopher and Karis, just wanna make sure everybody knows that just for attending this webinar and being with us here live, uh, for those of you that are here live, and we saved this for everyone who stuck around to the end, um, $75 toward tuition of the course. So if you uh, use this coupon, 75 for you, then you'll be able to jump in to this program for $75 off. So the program is, is six weeks. You'll have all the materials forever, uh, the recordings, the handouts, all the bonuses. You can read about the bonuses and the guest presentations. Um, $75 off would bring you to uh, $275 for the entire program. And so uh, again, the link is in the chat and the coupon is 75, oh my gosh. See, I need to check, 75 for you. <laughs> and then um, that will deduct uh, $75. And it's just for, for those of you that are here now. So thanks Abby for posting that in the chat and Christopher and Karis, let's talk a little bit about this. And thank you everyone for coming today and um, participating and bringing your questions to this, this conversation. Well, I have to say that um, I never host a program that I don't want to be studying myself. So I'm really excited uh, to be a student in the program, especially learning from my good friend, Christopher, who I trust and turn to for, with all my questions. I fortunately am on a texting friend basis with him. So he, he gets bombarded from me sometimes. <laughs> but um, you know, for me, one of the top priorities really is around this issue of quality um, and also just increasing the quantity of the mushrooms that I'm consuming, making sure that I'm getting the ones that are best for my health issues, which I do have some health issues that I am addressing um, with mushrooms. So I'm excited to really ramp up um, the, my own personal program with some expert guidance. Uh, and also just making it more affordable than a dollar a pill. And I, I personally hate swallowing capsules. So I'm really looking forward to, um, it, you know, working with powders to get more volume in to my um, program, in, in my health program. And, and uh, you know, just, I think it just makes it a lot more accessible, not just to me, but to my patients as well in my clinic. 
Well, I'm certainly excited to, I, I think as a educator, as an herbalist, um, a person who's fascinated with, with the, just the whole process of what makes us healthy, when, why does disease come even to healthy people? I, that's been a central question of my life. I've just been fascinated by what creates health, what is medicine in our life. So I'm so excited to just share uh, what I've learned all these, all these decades and my clinical experience and my, my passion. I, I think so much, you know, there's so much information out there on the web, isn't there? Uh, there's a, just a huge plethora of, of information. But what I wanna share is just my excitement and passion and, and deep understanding of the benefit of, of mushrooms and fungi uh, for really transforming many things in this world. Uh, they're just so transformative in many ways. And so I, I'm just really excited to be able to share my passion, my love of nature and, and, uh, and, and natural medicine, certainly, and especially mushroom medicine with everybody. So thanks for coming today again, and it's been a great pleasure to be with you. Great, and I think we can stick around and, and answer some more questions about the program. I know a lot of folks are still here and interested in the program. Uh, let us know in the chat if, if, if you're interested and you wanna hear more about it, because we'll, I think we could stick around a little bit, right, Karis? Uh, definitely, yeah, and Christopher- Okay, I'm gonna and say, I'm gonna sign off and say goodbye, yeah. and I hope to see you on the course. Thank Thanks, you, Christopher. Christopher. Yeah, my pleasure. Uh, it's great to talk to him um, again about this. Thanks, Karis, for inviting me to, to be able to be part of that conversation. I had a really good time uh, chatting with him yesterday when we were preparing. Definitely fun. Yeah, yeah. I'm noticing Heather is put the word candida in the chat, and that was another um, it's sort of like a fun, I think a fungiphobe word is people are afraid of consuming mushrooms who have candida. And I'll tell you as a practitioner, I've worked with a lot of people who struggle with candida and I don't believe mushrooms are really an issue for, um, and I have not had that experience. And I think that that may be, uh, um, a little bit of hype around the candida diet. And I think people are missing out on an opportunity to really enhance their immune systems because candida is opportunistic. So when somebody has a rundown immune system, they're more prone to having issues with candida. So I think just the opposite is true. If you're using the right medicinal mushroom, you're gonna overcome your candida imbalance, so. It, that's interesting. Do you feel like part of that is because we're thinking, okay, well, that's a, it's a type of fungus. And so any type of fungus is gonna be adding to the fungus. Yeah, like exactly, exactly. So citrus function. fruits, which yeah. tend to have you know, blueberries, they have fungal, fungal organisms on their surface. And so it, a, a while ago, I don't even, I wanna say in the nineties, the candida diet um, got a lot of attention. And it basically just told people to not eat anything that might have a mold a mold on it. But um, you know, there are molds come into a lot of different classes, and some of them definitely are toxic and an issue, as we all know. But not all of them. For example, your blue cheese, right? Your blue cheese is really beneficial to the microbiome. Mm -hmm. So one of the things about the programs that BotanicWise offers is the community. So when you're in, and I'm showing on the screen right now what it looks like, you have an events calendar and you can actually uh, sync, you know, a calendar with this and you'll be sent an alert whenever an event is about to go live. Um, but a lot of these conversations are happening. And if you were to look at other programs that are in the network, you can see just how active the, the conversations are with members. You know, a few hundred people completely digging into a topic together and, you know, sharing together and exploring and answering questions for each other. And I think that's what's so exciting about this topic is that to really get a well-rounded education, to be able to do that with other students, with Christopher Hobbs responding to, to questions directly inside the chat and having an entire table of contents of, of replays and videos and materials that you can refer to. Uh, yeah, I want to I want to butt in there that the first time we used this um, 
format for a six week course was with the food for optimal health with Paul Bergner. And I thought it would be nice to have a community, but I had no idea how fantastic it would be and how much the community, you know, the community knowledge, there's so many people who are taking these programs who have a lot of experience and knowledge and, and resources that were all shared within the community. And it just made um, the program for me is just so much more valuable. It's how I found out about Simple Needs Gluten-Free Bread, which changed my life because it's a, like a real bread that is so wonderful. And I never would have known about it if it hadn't been for the community, so. That's great. So does anybody have any questions about the course? I know that it's a, it's a decision. It's a big decision because, you know, we're talking about a six week program, kind of a, a deep dive and, um, so yeah, please drop any questions in the chat. And the other thing is, um, you know, one thing to, to, to know about the Botanic Wise courses is that even though these classes are taught live, the way that they're organized and the resource that they're put into it becomes a self-paced course that you can take when the time is right for you. So you do not need to be attending each of the live classes in order to participate. And that's the other reason that we built this into the community format is just so that we could have, um, you know, all of that conversation can continue to happen and people will go through the course again with a group um, and you have the ability to, you know, add additional watch parties and events and things like that inside the course. So we're excited about all the potential that can come from that as well. So. You know, that I just wanted to answer that up front because I know that's one of the big questions that always comes up is, you know, do I need to be there for each of the live events? And you you do not. You can certainly participate um, in the community on whatever schedule works best for you. All right. So yeah, and 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 Carol brought up exactly uh, my reason too. Is sometimes we're in a remote cabin and. It was potentially problematic internet. Carol, I lived in a cabin for four years. And so I totally understand <laughs> taking online courses from, from the remote cabin. Yeah, I just mentioned to her that you can even call in with a landline, at least to listen to the live class. And then you can watch the replay to get the slides. Mm -hmm. Definitely. All right, so let's see. Yeah, there was a couple couple questions about scholarships. So thank you everyone for asking because one of the one of the goals with the programs is to make this material really accessible to people. And so the program has guest presenters, of course, uh, Christopher Hobbs and our team, and then the platform. So that's what you're going to support when you uh, the tuition goes to support everything that Botanicwise is doing to to create programs like this and to create conferences and other kinds of things. Um, accessibility is, is very important. So definitely email info at botanicwise.com if you wanna discuss scholarship or something like that. Um, Rose asks, how long do we have access to recordings? Uh, forever. <laughs> yeah. Yay. I don't believe in expiring these courses <laughs> because you're putting a lot of money out there for a program. You should be have as much time as you want to review the material. I feel really passionately about that because mm -hmm. I am one of those people that it takes me a while to get to my programs when I purchase them, but I do get to them. I also want to mention one of the new things that we're doing this this uh, for this program is actually going through, and because, you know, Christopher Hobbs, and he can be very technical and get into a lot of details. So we're actually going to be going through the videos and bookmarking every, uh, like a bullet list, like a table of contents of everything. So you can actually use a search and actually type in what you're looking for and find the exact video clip and slide to answer your question. Um, so that might seem a little little nerdy. You might say, you know, why, why is that so important? Well, I just know that when you have a specific question about health-related issue or, you know, getting into these details, sometimes you don't want to wait until it gets to that part of the video. You want to be able to search for what you're looking for and find it. And that's actually in the, the way that the platform is set up is the ability to search 
really well. So I can look up something like beta glucans and, you know, find just, I mean, after, once the course starts, there's going to be a lot more results to the word beta glucans, but you can see that even conversations are showing up into, um, into that search. So a, a very rich search inside the community to find what you're looking for and participate in the right conversation that you need to have at the moment. So these are some of those little, little kind of geeky things behind the scenes that, you know, we don't know if anybody notices, but then we find out, oh, wow, this is actually working really well for people. Yeah. You're welcome, Martha. <laughs> so welcome. <laughs> I think another thing, um, uh, yeah, thanks Heather too. I love the care you put into the community, thank you. Yeah, I think, um, you know, sometimes people ask, you know, why don't you just use, you know, a Facebook group or something like that? And it's really this specificity of having a community like this that's, that's, off, that's not on Facebook where you can have a profile that's just about the part of you that's really passionate about plant medicine. So, um, <laughs> yeah and then and and mentions yeah we do have some feelings about facebook um that's funny because we are broadcasting live on facebook right now but <laughs> hopefully they're not listening <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah this 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 software platform was was developed by a, a women-owned business and uh, entrepreneurs who in an interview when talking about why they created this this software um, they said if the, they said if the internet was run by women, it would involve more consent and less invasion of privacy. And we decided to build a platform that would do both of those things really well and really like focus on bringing people together instead of dividing them. Um, so I thought, you know, what a what a fantastic software platform to partner with for Botanicwise. Yeah, it's brilliant. Thank you, Ryan, for steering us in that direction. I admit I was a little resistant at first and had to learn a new thing, <laughs> but it was super easy. It really was. And Abby helped me a lot. <laughs> yeah. Abby, Abby's like the, the expert here behind the scenes and has even helped some other herbalists create networks. So Stacy, um, if you want to email us about your question about partners listening in in households, that would be great. We have a few questions and just send us an email at botanicwise at gmail.com and we will answer you. Thank you. Um, I appreciate your, your consideration of that question. Okay, so I'm going to put the link in the chat one more time. We'd love to have you. I think we forgot to mention that all of the Botanic Wise programs have a um, no risk guarantee. Is that what we call it? 100% 100% worth it guarantee. So you know you can sign up today. You can take advantage of this uh, $75 coupon toward tuition, and you know you can still change your mind if you feel like it's not right for you. Okay, so you know we never, you know we're never locking you into anything that you don't want to be part of. So. Just you know, wanted to make sure that we mentioned that because that is a concern for some people. Um, some some online courses are just really all about the money, and you know, once you sign up, you can't get away get away from it, and it's not what you thought it would be. And you know, this is this is botanicalized. This is all about the community here. So, um, any final questions? Thank you, Linda. Linda. Says, look forward to the class going to be amazing. Yeah, and and says since we first mentioned it. Yeah. All right, bye Rose, bye Pierce. Um well, anything else, Karis? I don't think so. I appreciate having some people hang out. A good group. If you want to unmute yourself and just say hi, do it. Don't be shy. Nice to see real people out there. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Stacy, Itzy. Oh, Hi, Cars. Who yes. is that, Lee? It's Marie. <laughs> oh, it's, hi. 
It's Marie Thank from you. Costa Rica. Hi. Hi, Marie. Nice How to are see you? you? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna. Be, I want to come see you. I want to come see you when I come back. I'm coming back yeah. shortly. So. Oh, good. Um, I'll be. I'll be here. Except last week of July, I'm going to visit Rosemary Gladstar. Oh, nice, <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Well, it's good to see you, and this is a great course, and I'm going to try to see if I can make it happen for me. Thank you for offering awesome. this. You're All so right. Welcome. I don't have much options for mushrooms here, though, but <laughs> other than the but, the button ones, but well, um, you'll just have to buy a butt ton when you come up. I buy the, dried ones from, get from the dried Jeff ones. and Dari. Yeah, yeah, I get them from Jeff and Dari. I mean, not Jeff and Dari, from Matt and Jesse. So yeah. anyway, yeah. <laughs> so I bring them back with me. That's but. my source too. Yep. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Well, I'm going to touch base with you when I get back next week and see if Sounds I can get to Marine. see you. Okay. Nice to hear your voice. Same here. Bye, dear. Bye-bye. Quick question. I don't know yet if I'll be taking the class, but I know I need the book. Is the book included in the tuition or you just get it on your own? There's... Um, Abby, can you answer that? It's not included in the tuition, but I think okay. there is a t uh, discount for participants. So if you yeah, are there buying is, it. Um, yeah, uh, Chris Hobbs has arranged um, a discount on the book for all students. Um, and it is a companion to the course, but it's not essential that you have it as we cover pretty much the whole book in the course. Okay. Do you want to share a link to purchase it just in case anybody would doesn't want to do the program, but they want the book. I suppose it's through Amazon, right? Unfortunately. Uh, yeah, you can get it directly from the publisher, but the Amazon is the easiest one. <laughs> yeah, it's really <laughs> beautiful story. illustrations. Story Publishing is the publisher. Thanks, Abby. <clears throat> Thank you. Nice to see you, Carol. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got me on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yeah. <laughs> we are going to have another free webinar next week. So you can just come back next Thursday. It'll be an evening webinar. So you can come back and get a little more. You, you know, Christopher will never do the same thing twice. So okay. it'll be similar theme, but it, who knows what's going to come out of him? <laughs> Sounds good. Right? Yeah. Thanks. Good. <laughs> Margo. Hi, Margo. Yes. Hi. Thank you so much. I'm in California. And um, I'm interested in the course. It's a lot of money for me. So I'm interested in what we could do with the scholarship. Yeah, so if you would email us and we'll we'll put we'll communicate with you about that. Uh, our scholarship program kind of depends on our regular registrations. So yes. depending on how they mm -hmm. go, then we're able to offer um, at least partial scholarship. So mm -hmm. if you would email us at info at botanicwise.com, um, Abby will include you on our list of people who are asking for scholarship. Info at botanicwise. Bot Mm -hmm. com. Yeah. 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 We have mushrooms here in the foothills of the Sierras. Oh, you're well, close to Christopher. <laughs> Where in um, California are you? Nevada City. Okay. I think, are you close to Davis? That's where Christopher lives. Oh, well, it's, um, he's down in the valley. We're up in the foothills. Okay. Well, he loves about, to go up into those about, mountains. <laughs> about... Oh, 90 miles. Mm -hmm. 90 nice. Miles. So when and if it rains, we'll have mushrooms. <laughs> yes, right. You do have a dry season right now, don't you? We serve a very, very dry season. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll um, email you. That's good. We'll look forward to hearing from you, Margaret. That's good. I'm so glad to to get in on this initial talk. Yes, yeah. it's great. Thank you, thank you. Thanks for being uh, here. Nice to meet yeah. you. All right, last call, anybody else? Brian, I, oh, Fernanda. Hi, hi. I'm at the gym. 
<laughs> multitasking. Yes. Um, I'm also going to apply for the scholarship. I am a certified full spectrum doula and a diaspora deaf doula, along with um, I'm a practitioner, a practitioner for ancestral healing. So mushrooms is something that I want to incorporate into healing, you know, clients and stuff and recommending it for a diet for pregnant women or pregnant birthing people. So I'm really interested in the course and I'm excited that I was able to log on. I got off work at nine, so it was a little bit late, but I think I got the better end of it. Um, thank good. you so much. Yeah, good. And come back next week too on next Thursday evening, Eastern time. Where are you located? I'm in California. I'm in San Diego. Okay, so it'll be uh, four o'clock next time. I don't know if you can sneak out, but. Yes, I'll be able to do that. Awesome. Thank you so much. It yeah, nice great to you. see you. I'm glad you and glad one of us is exercising. <laughs> <gasps> My first day back. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Good for you. Keep it up. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. For the for, will there be a replay opportunity for those that came in late? Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. Abby will send you the link. It, the replay will be hosted in the community. So if, you, if you're not already in our community platform, it will ask you to join the community. You're welcome to join the community, watch the replay, and leave the community if you don't want to be part of the community. We don't mean to force you into it. But I think you'll like it once you're there, When since people like Christopher and Rosemary Gladstar and Kate Gilday and Deb Soul, we got a wonderful, wonderful, uh, well-known names in the herbal community and just so supportive and safe. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Thanks, Denise. All right, Ryan, are you there? Anything? I'm here. Should we call it a wrap? I think so. Yeah, thank you. Thank this you, was really Ryan. fun. It was great to great to hang out and yeah, I'll catch you okay. later. Thanks for the personal connection, y'all. It's great. Bye. Bye-bye. See you next week.